Good morning, brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'm so happy to be here right now. I love you so much and uh, really, 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 really missed you all. Um, I'm ready today to do the Lord's will. Um, I always wait upon Father to share his heart with me so I can share his heart with others. Um, and I never want to do anything um, ahead of the Lord. I just always want to wait upon the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to work out his perfect, uh, his perfect will um, through my weak vessel, through my life, to, uh, to encourage, to edify, and to lift up the body of Christ and to speak uh, the words of the living God. So um, this message today is going to be about um, do not chase the world's success what the world calls success, worldly success, will take your soul. Um, nothing, <laughs> not too much bothers me more than, um, than the prosperity gospel. <laughs> False lying gospel, <laughs> it really, really bothers me. And, um, and nothing bothers me too much more than... Um, uh, hearing motivational uh, speakers, <laughs> motivational of like worldly success. It just makes me want to throw up. I got to be honest. It makes me want to throw up uh, because I obviously, most of you know that I'm in sales. I, I, I sell cars for a living. Um, um, this is where the Lord has me. And, um, you know, I'm surrounded uh, by a lot of, uh, you know, I should say some people um, that are uh, the world, the world, the people of this world. They're motivated. They're motivated by success of this world. Uh, you know, uh, accumulating things and work, um, money and businesses and power, and um, they think that like like that. That's success, and that giving people, you know. Um, more opportunities or like, you know, they're motivated by like, like this false success and they want to achieve, um, they want to retire early. They want to, they want to, uh, live, uh, you know, lavish and they, they want to, you know, uh, achieve all these different goals and, and there's nothing wrong with working hard and, uh, wanting to make more money to provide for your family. No, nope, that's not it, but it's the chase of the world success. It's the chasing after of things. It's the chasing after of the money. It's the chasing after of the power. It's the chasing after of all these uh, things that the world, the world considers success. And I have to sit sometimes in, um, you know, meetings and, and they're usually by uh, some kind of a person that is called rich in this world. And I tell you all of their achievements and everything that they've done, how they did it. And it's the same just garbage of that, you know, um, like Joel Olstein, the better you message. And what even makes me more sick are when people that are called uh, believers um, that fall into these traps and they fall into this... Uh, motivational, the better you, the go chase after this and be the best you. And God does not say anything about um, those kinds of things, okay? He doesn't, he doesn't say those things. We chase after God. We chase after Jesus Christ. We chase after him. We worship him. We live and abide in, a, in him, we, we follow after him. We, we seek his heart. We seek his affection. We seek his will. We seek his wisdom. We seek his judgments. We, we seek his righteousness. We seek him, guys. We chase him. We love and follow him. And that's what we do. He is our riches. Our riches are in Christ Jesus, our Lord, our King, our Savior, our Deliverer, our Redeemer, our eternal life, our wisdom, our salvation is in Him. He is all that we chase. 
And if we're living our lives chasing after a job, chasing to get ahead, chasing these things, chasing our own goals, chasing our own ambitions, and not chasing him first, we are deceived, greatly deceived. If we get up every day and our day is a five minute prayer, a couple minutes with the Lord, and then the rest of our day, we're spending time and how to get more success, how to how to do more better for my job, how to how to create more, how to how to how to, how to do everything that is around my my goals and my ambitions, about myself, about my own plans, about my own will, about my own desires. That's idolatry. That's idolatry. Getting up and, you know, spending a little bit of time or just doing a little prayer, a little reading, a devotional. And then the rest of the day is about how I can prepare to be better, how to reach this goal and that goal and achieve this and achieve that. And have all these selfish ambitions that the Lord probably hasn't even placed upon your heart. It's sickening. It's sickening how many people that call themselves believers and give God the crumbs. And they think that what they're doing is good. Chasing after the success of this world. Worldly success. And then they want to think that that's, this, is what, this is what matters. And they think that Christ is first. Christ is not first in your life. If you're chasing after all your ambitions, if your day and your month and your year and your years are planned about how to achieve all your goals and how to achieve this worldly success and how to make all these things happen, and you're putting so much plans and preparation into it and giving God the crumbs, not chasing after righteousness, not chasing after truth, not chasing after wisdom. Not chasing after God's judgments. Not chasing after the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. These are the riches in Christ that matter. This is the true riches that matter that Christ gives us in Him. The abundance of life in Him. Eternal life in Christ. Prospering in faith, prospereth in truth, prospering in righteousness, prospering in wisdom and strength in the Lord, prospering in faith, doing his will, speaking his words, sharing his heart, receiving his instructions, yielding in him, abiding in him and as he abides in us and bears forth his fruit teaching us and equipping us with his heart. <clears throat> this is what matters. Loving and worshiping God, following after him, chasing him and all of our ambitions are in him. This is what matters. Everything else is meaningless without him. Don't be deceived. Thinking that you're for him, living in sin. Don't be deceived. Thinking that you're living and walking in the truth and living in compromise, in complacency, all about yourself or your family or your job. Don't be deceived. Please don't be deceived, brothers and sisters. People out there, hear the words of the Lord. Hear the word of God. Examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Examine your hearts to see. Does your heart yearn from God? Does your heart chase after him? Does your heart seek his heart? <coughs> Are you set apart? Are you living holy and sanctified by truth? Are you impacting people's lives with the gospel of Jesus Christ? 
Are you preaching the gospel? Are you warning people of God's wrath to come on the wicked? Are you telling people about God loving them to not only save them from the penalty of sin, but set them free from the power of sin, true salvation in Christ? Not a get out of jail free card. Salvation in Christ, breaking every chain, breaking the sin off your life. And setting you apart to live holy and righteous in him and walking in true love, which is following his instructions, abiding in his word. First Timothy <coughs> chapter six, verses three to eleven. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Godliness. The doctrine according to godliness. Not abundance of money. Not abundance of jobs. Not abundance of, of worldly success. But godliness. The doctrine of godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doubting about questions and strives of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men, of corrupt minds, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Withdraw from Kenneth Copeland. Withdraw from jo Joel Osteen. Withdraw <coughs> from Creflo Dollar. Withdraw from Jesse Duplantis. Withdraw from T.D. Jakes. Withdraw from these worthless preachers preaching doctrines of demons, supposing that gain is godliness. Withdraw all from believers that are chasing after worldly success, that are chasing after their own ambitions, that don't know Jesus Christ. Withdraw thyself. <clears throat> but godliness with contentment is great gain, my friends. Godliness with contentment is great gain. We brought nothing into this world. We brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can bring nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. But they that be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts with which drown men in destruction and perdition. The riches of this world will, will blind you and deceive you and snatch your soul right from you. That's what the devil offers. That's what he offered Jesus. He says, if you bow down and worship me, I will give you all the kingdoms of this world. Even though they were already Jesus's. He said, no. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only. The devil has power to give you the filthy riches of this world. But Jesus gives you the riches that are in him. And if God chooses to, to give you extra money or a lot of money, fine. So be it. God can do that. God does as he pleases. But that's not true prosperity. It's a tool. That's all it is. And never chase uh, more gain. Never chase wealth of money. Never chase that. Never let that be an ambition to you. <clears throat> you get caught up in this false sense thinking that all these worldly things that you can help people with, that stuff doesn't matter. The gospel of Jesus Christ matters. Sure, you can be a tool <clears throat> to bless somebody, to pay their rent, or to give them food and, and clothes. Sure, we are called to do these things. <clears throat> but those are tools. <clears throat> Without the gospel, without Christ, you have nothing and you're dead in your sins. We need to preach repentance. 
and place your trust in the one true God, Jesus Christ, and receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior to turn from this world, to turn from the flesh, to turn from Satan and to follow after him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Matthew 6, 24. It's sickening. It's sickening the, the people and how the devil deceives and chase after worldly success. It's even more sickening when you see someone that are believers chasing after worldly success and that's their number one motivation and you know it. You know it. If Jesus was their number one motivation, you would be talking about Christ. You would be getting with a brother or sister, spending time in his word, building and edifying each other in his word, talking about his word, wherever you're at, wherever you're at, morning, day or night, wherever you're at, you would want to be connected with believers. You would want to be connected in the spirit, abiding in Christ. You would want to be abiding in his word, his word abiding in you. You would want to be talking about truth in God and salvation in Christ a lot more than anything else. Sure, we have jobs to do. We got to concentrate on a job to do. But, you know, you could still talk about the Lord. Seeking after his will. Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, money. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve God and money. You serve God. You seek after God. You seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all things are added unto you. You delight yourself in the Lord. You delight yourself in the King of Kings, the Lord God Almighty, our Father in heaven who loves us. You delight yourself in his judgments. You delight yourself in his righteousness. You delight yourself in truth, in living holy, in worshiping him, and following him, and loving him, and abiding in him. This is what matters. Matthew 13, 22. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word in the care of this world. In the care of this world. In the deceitfulness of riches chokes the word and becometh unfruitful. Hear the word of the Lord, all you that chase after worldly success. Hear ye the word of the Lord. He also that received among the thorns is he that heareth the word in the care of this world in the deceitfulness of riches chokes the word and he becometh unfruitful. Proverbs eleven twenty eight. He that trusteth in his own riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch. Deuteronomy 8, 10 through 14. Deuteronomy 8, verses 10 through 14. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwell therein. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied. Then... 
then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. When Christ is not first, when Jesus Christ is not your Lord, your King, your salvation, your Savior, when he is not number one in your life, in your marriage, in your home, in your workplace, in your ministry, in your being, in everything, when he is not number one, the riches of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the cares of this world will take you away from him. No one cares, no world believer cares about the riches of this world. Worldly success is not success. Knowing the one and true God, being born again from heaven above, from the spirit of the living God, receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior, being delivered from sin and the penalty and power of sin and having eternal life and worship in God. Now that is success that you should be chasing. Proverbs 23, 4. Proverbs 23, 4. Labor not to be rich. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thy own wisdom. Psalms 52, 7. Psalms 52, 7. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. The one that trusts us in riches, the one that trusts us in this world's success, which is not success, that one strengthens himself in wickedness. And you wonder why you're in bondage to sin. And you wonder why you can't stop uh, living for this world and the desires of this world and the things that are against God that he says not to do, but you willfully rebel and do. And you wonder why. Maybe because your heart is not affectionate for Christ. Maybe because your faith is a fagazi faith. Maybe it's a false faith. Maybe your, your faith is in a different Jesus. Maybe your faith is in a different one true God. Maybe you really don't live for Jesus Christ. Maybe you're deceived. And the deceitfulness of riches and the cares of this world have deceived you. Mark 10, 24. My Bible's falling apart. I gotta get a new one. Mark 10, 24. The Lord has been burning this message upon my heart. Like I said, motivational people that are rich in this world and speak about how they got there, what they do, all their motivations. You don't hear Christ in anything and it makes me sick. And every time I hear one of these fugazi, motivational, worldly chasers talking about how they did it, what they do, all this motivational stuff, I want to throw up. I want to throw up. It grieves my spirit, and I wonder, do they know God? I don't wonder that I'm, um, when they speak like that, I, I know and I have a sense I can discern. I can't do it every time I hear anybody because I don't know if they, if um, you know, if if they if they know God, and it's only a little a little talking about it because there's nothing wrong with trying to uh, uh, to achieve goals or to be better. There's nothing wrong with that. It's chasing after your selfish ambitions. It's chasing after the riches of this world. It's chasing after success. It's chasing after those things and not chasing Jesus Christ and not putting Jesus number one and first. Because if it was, if Jesus was number one, you would mention that when you're talking. You would talk about his righteousness, his truth. 
He is the truth. You would mention uh, his holiness. You would mention uh, salvation in Christ, being delivered from the power of sin, uh, being sanctified and holy and set apart to do his will. You would mention that when you're speaking. Mark 10, 24. And the disciples went, were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God? How hard is it? Like a camel going through the eye of a needle. There are so many lukewarm, fake Christians, fake believers that think they have Christ, that think they know him, live in willful rebellion and chase after these worlds and misquote scriptures out of context and they wanna throw Jesus' name in their lives, acting like he's their Lord, that means master, and acting like he's their king and acting like they serve him and follow him and live in sin and chase after this world. It's a mockery. It's a pig pen. It's disgusting. It's blasphemy. Repent. Turn from your wicked heart. Place your faith and trust and commit your life to Jesus Christ wholly, not lukewarm not half-hearted, not halfway in the world and halfway out of the world, not straddling the fence. There's no such thing. You're either for Christ or you're not. You're either sitting at the table with the Lord or sitting at the table with demons. You cannot do both. You cannot do both. Hebrews 13, five. I love this scripture. Hebrews 13, five. Let your conversation be without covetousness. That word right there in the Greek, that word covetousness, I didn't write it down, but you could look it up for yourselves. That word, that word covetousness there actually means directly the love of money. That's exactly what that means. There's different words for covetous in, in the New Testament, but that word in that place means the love of money. It's exactly what it means. Let your conversation be without the love of money. Let your conversation be without the love of money, covetousness, the love of money. I mentioned that Jesus had no part of uh, wanting to chase after uh, this world. His will was to do the Father's will. His will was to do the Father's will. Our will is to do his will. Moses was one of the richest people around, being uh, growing up in the house of Pharaoh. Growing up in the house of Pharaoh, what did he do? Moses, he, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, 24 through 26. What did Moses do? What did that great man of faith do? By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. So he forsook Egypt, Pharaoh, and chased after God to do his will. God can cause you to have um, um, an abundance of money. He does with some people, he does with others. It's his will, he can do whatever he wants. It's not for, it's not for God's will for every person to, to uh, have an abundance of money, it's not his will. Some, whatever we have, we'd be content with it. Whether it's an abundance, we'd be content, or whether it's a little, we'd be content. God does as he pleases. And everything that he does is according to his perfect will and the counsel of his own will. And there, it's a, it's a tool. To, if he gives you money, it's a tool. There's a reason why he gave you money. There's a reason why you got a raise. There's a reason why. It's God's purposes. But that might not be the case next year or tomorrow. Our trust is in 
Christ, he does as he pleases. He's perfect in all of his ways. He's perfect in all of his ways. God is so good. Because people, of course, will say, oh, well, this person was this, this, and that in the Bible. Job and Joseph and all these uh, people. It's for God's purpose, for God's glory, for God's reasons. For many people in the New Testament that lacked um, abundance of money. Some had it, some didn't. It's not about that. It's not about money. Never has been, never will be. It's about Jesus Christ. Loving and following him and living for him and doing his will and trusting him and having him order your steps. What's Colossians say? What does Colossians say? Let's look at Colossians chapter three. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, set your affections on the things above, not on the things of this earth. For ye are dead and your lives are hid in Christ and God. He is our life. Our lives are in Christ. Chase after him. Set your affections above, not on the things of this world. <coughs> First Chronicles sixteen eleven. First Chronicles sixteen eleven. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face continually. That's what we do. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he have done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Seek the Lord continually. Delight yourself in him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. Proverbs 16.3 Proverbs 16, 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. But people want to commit themselves to their ambitions, their worldly success, their desires, and then throw Jesus in it. That's not what it says. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Put God first. Then thy thoughts will be established. He'll order your steps. Zephaniah 2 3. I always have a hard time fighting this book. All right, Zephaniah 2, 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Psalm 119, 2. Psalm 119 2, blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with their whole heart. <laughs> blessed are they that keep his testimonies and seek him with their whole heart. Psalms 119 72, the law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Amen. The instructions of the Lord's mouth are better than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Guys, the Lord 
knows what's in your heart. The Lord is trying the reins of your heart. He knows everything. You can't hide from God. You can't hide from the Lord. He is searching and seeking those that have a heart for him. He is searching and seeking those that have a heart for him. Psalms 14, 2. Psalms 14, 2. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. The Lord is looking to see, is there anyone that understands? Is there anyone that seeks after God? 1 Chronicles 28, 9. First Chronicles 28, 9. And thou, Solomon, my son, know that thou, the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. The Lord is coming back soon, guys. Make sure your house is built upon the rock, Jesus Christ. Make sure you're chasing after the one true God and not the God of this world. Make sure the Jesus that you call your Lord and Savior is the real Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Isaiah 35, Isaiah 33, 56. The Lord is exalted for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with justice and righteousness. He will be the stability of your times, a wealth of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Do you fear God out there? Because the word says the fear of the Lord is his treasure. This treasure is what matters. Treasures in Christ, righteousness, judgment, his judgments, his holiness, his love, truth, faith in him and his word. Living and abiding in him because apart from him, you can do nothing. You out there that call yourselves believers, that are trusting in yourself, your selfish ambitions, your own desires, chasing after the world's success, throwing Jesus in the middle of it. He sees you out there. He knows you out there. You that are living for this world. You that call yourselves believing, following false wolves, false fake pastors that, that are prosperity pimps, chasing after covetousness, making merchandise of you, making a mockery of the gospel of Jesus Christ, supposing that gain is godliness. You out there, withdraw yourself from them. And any of you that hear that are prosperity pimps, repent and turn and receive the goodness and kindness of God. Seek after his heart. Repent and believe in the one true God. Anyone out there that's preaching another gospel, the Bible says in Galatians 1, 6, let them be condemned. There is no such thing as the prosperity gospel. It's a lie from the pit of hell manipulating, twisting scriptures and making it all about prosperity. 
I'm going to leave you with this, my friends and brothers and sisters, and those out there that don't know God, that are living in sin and blinded in this world, that are serving another Jesus, another gospel, another one, uh, serving another God, not the one true God, not Jesus Christ, King of kings and the Lord of lords, the most high God, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. I'm going to leave you with this. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 through 17. Love not the world nor the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. It's not in you. You out there chasing wealth of this world, fake success, the worldly success, and sprinkling Jesus' name on it. You out there that are chasing the things of this world, you out there have not the love of the Father in you. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Repent. Place your trust in Jesus Christ. Love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. If this message convicts you, good. I pray it encourages you in the truth and leads you in the path of righteousness. I pray that you walk on the narrow path. I pray that you repent and believe in God. I pray that you turn to him and have the fear of the Lord in you. I pray that you walk in truth, submit yourselves to God, and then resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I pray that God breaks every chain off your lives and that the word of the living God would convict you, touch you, and break every chain off of you. And that you would put God really first in your marriage, first in your house, first in your life, first in your workplace, first in your ministry. First means not you wake up and you say a little prayer and then the rest of your day is all about yourself and your ambitions and your desires in this world. First is not you read a devotional and you read a, a Joel Osteen uh, book, okay, a chapter and you get up and then you live for yourselves and you still live in sin and you're still chasing after the world. That's not first. To God. First to God is when you repent, believe in Him, trust in Him, live and abide in Him, set your affections on Him, follow after Him, staying in His Word, staying in His prayer, loving Him, walking in truth, walking in love, seeking after His plans, His will, His purposes in your life, being for Him and about Him. Want to talk about him, want to think about him, following after him. Setting your affections above. Setting your affections in Christ, not of this world. When the Lord starts dominating your life with truth and love and faith, and you're thinking more about him, and you're constantly wanting to follow him, be obedient to him. Seeking after him, that is when he's first. Not when you're holding on to willful, rebellious sin. Not when you're drunken. Not when you're getting high. Not when you're chasing after riches. Not when you're living in lust. Not when you're following after the things of this world. Not when you're living in idolatry. Not when you're living in these filthy sins. Not when you're not constantly spending time with God every day. When you wake up, where are your heart? Where is your thoughts? Are you chasing after work? Are you chasing after your own goals? Are you chasing after your desires? Are you looking to Jesus Christ? Are you looking in his word? Are you constantly seeking him? Are you putting him first in your day when you get up? Are you following after him? Are you yielding to him? Are you abiding in him and him abiding in you and bearing forth real fruit, which is from him? I love you all, brothers and sisters. 
Stay encouraged. Jesus loves you. Jesus is for you. Real believers out there, he is for us. And if he is for us, who could be against us? Those that are lukewarm, I love you. This message is not a, a message of, um, um, I'm not against you. I'm against what you're doing. I'm against the deception. I'm against the lies. I'm against the deceitfulness of the hearts that are causing you to live for yourself and living for this world. I'm against that. I love you. I love yous out there. This is a warning as I'm called to do. Sound the alarm. Warn the people of my words, God says. I just spoke to you the word of the living God. I shared the heart of God. I shared the words of God in, in his word that lives and abides forever. The spirit of God breathed his word. The, the Bible is the word of the living God. Test everything by the word of God, by the spirit of God that wrote the word of God. Examine yourselves. Test yourself and your faith according to the scriptures. Not according to your own ideas and Joel Osteen's ideas and these fake pimps and prosperity preachers. Test it by the word of the living God. Read it for yourselves and don't read it out of context to fit your desires. Come to God humbly today. Humble today. Come before him and ask him to seek your heart, to try your heart. Ask him to, to, to seek to see what's in there and to show you what's in your heart that you can see. Ask him to bring it to the light. Ask him to expose the devil. I pray now that the devil would be exposed in your lives. I pray that God would expose the devil, his demons, his fake believers, his evil preachers, his traps and his devices, his schemes, the way he manipulates his, the word of God. I pray that he would expose the enemy in all of his ways right now in the name of Jesus, God. Expose the devil in all of his ways and all of his evil workers and everything that he's lied and manipulated. Uh, people that you died for, Jesus. People that you love and died for and rose again on the third day to save them, to deliver them, and to set them free. Expose them in all their ways. Show them what they can't see. Speak to the deepest parts of their hearts, God, so they know, God, and can place their trust in you, Jesus. Help them to repent, God. Show your goodness and kindness, God, that leads to repentance, Father, like you've done for me, like you've done for your us believers, God. Do not let us be deceived, Father. Lead us in the paths of righteousness, Father, for your name's sake, O oh God. Father, I ask all these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Encourage us today, God. Edify us today, God. Draw close to us today. Draw the real believers closer to each other, God, and closer to you than ever before, God. Help us to speak your words, God. Help us to think your words, God. Help us to do your word, God. To live and abide in you, God. Holy Spirit of God, we are counting on you, the greater one that's inside of us, than he that is in the world. Lead us and guide us in all truth, God. Your sheep hear your voice, God. Today, Lord, may we hear your voice, O oh God. Speak to us, God. Empower us to glorify your name, God to be the salt of the earth, Lord God, to walk in love and truth, God, and faith, God. Bring others to us, Lord God, that we can encourage and edify, God, that we can warn and love, God, that we can speak forth your words, God, to touch them, God, to stir them up in faith, God, so they can trust you and follow you, Lord God, and know you, God, for you're full of grace, Father, and you're full of truth. It says you came, Jesus, full of grace and truth, not just grace, but full of grace and full of truth, God, not one without the other, God. You're all one, God, full of righteousness, holiness, God, love, God, mercy and truth, God, and also, Lord God, you are a God of wrath as well, God. 
You're going to pour it out on the wicked and all those that hate you, God, and all those that follow after Satan. And you're going to pour it out on Satan and his demons and all those that reject you, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father God, that you would light the fear of the Lord in our hearts, Father. The fear of the Lord in our hearts, God. I pray that you would light a fire in us, Lord God, and burn out of our lives, Father, everything that's not of you, Lord God. All deception and the manipulation of the truth, God. Burn that away from anyone that's, that struggles in that, God. Burn it away, Lord God. Fill us, God, with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Give us wisdom today, God. Give those that can't see eyes to see, Lord God, and ears to hear, God. Your word says in Isaiah 59, 1, that your, your ears are not heavy that you cannot hear. That your arms are not shortened that you can't deliver. But your sins have separated you from God. I love you so much out there. And more importantly, Jesus loves you guys more than you can ever dream, more than you can ever imagine. He loves you. The love of God, Jesus Christ, you should know him, the truth, and the truth shall set you free. God bless you all. Stay encouraged. Jesus loves you. Jesus is coming back soon. No one knows the hour or the time, but certainly we know the times and the seasons. All believers out there, their eyes are set upon the Lord, their hearts are fixed on him, know that he is coming back soon. No, it could be any day, any year. He's coming as a thief in the night. Make sure your heart and your affections are in him. Make sure your faith is in the one true God. Make sure that you're serving the real Jesus, the real God Almighty. God bless you.